Well, good afternoon, everybody. 18th IRF World Championships. My name is Tim Baghurst. We're watching the beginning of Mexico versus Ecuador. Men's doubles, round robin, pool play. 0-0. Zero, zero. Beautiful pinch rollout winner from Jose Diaz on the right. Skip ball. So it's one serve zero. Excuse me, zero zero. Scoreboard was incorrect. Behind the back from Jake Redenback. Didn't work twice though. Zero serve zero. Got a good crowd here. A serve. Beautiful serve there from Ugalde. Jose Daniel. Topo is his nickname. Sets up again. Skip ball from Jake Breden back on the left. Minnesota. Two serve zero. They get from Udalgo. And another one. Jose Diaz. And look at that. Rios with a fantastic anticipation. Crushing reverse corner from Jake Bradenbeck. These guys are hitting it hard. Two serving zero. Replay call. Nice pinch winner from Jake. Side out, zero serving two. Some interesting history between these two teams. They played each other just a few months ago at the Pan Am Championships. Skip there from Diaz, he's not happy with himself. And Ecuador were the team that came out, the eventual winners there, advancing to the final to play Mexico, who they lost to. But it was a tight match. So we expect a similar story here. This one could go the distance. Team Ecuador, the same from that time in March. The US had Jake Bradenbeck, but uh, Jake's partner was Bobby Horn. This time it's his normal double partner of Jose Diaz who they got to the final of the US Open last year. So they may be a little bit more comfortable playing with each other. I guess we'll find out. Good get. Set up for Rios. Replay call. Not sure I agree with that one, but we don't have line judges here. I'm a little surprised by that. I, I thought they might have started with line judges. We do have line judges available should the players request it. Generally, as officials, you don't start with them just because it takes additional toll on the officials um, who are responsible for refereeing throughout the week. So if we can avoid doing it, we do. But if it's necessary, they come into play. We're at three serving zero. That was a big skip from Ugalde. And another one from Rios. Michu is his a nickname. Ecuador's coach is Sodzi Manchik. USA's coach is, head coach at least, is Dave Ellis. Dave sits to my left, Sodzi to my right. One serving three. One serving three. 
half lob. Ugalde really attacked that, went down the middle. Jake didn't have a chance to return that. Jake goes with the Nick lob. It's a good serve. Good hands. Jake went for between the legs, skipped it. Three serving one. Mine says Rios. It's a great get by Jake. Good finish by Ugaldedo. Our official is Gustavo from Cali, Colombia here. A serve. Jake got that apparently. Four serving one. I spoke to Gustavo recently. He told me that um, he loves the big matches. I'm not sure what the call. Short serve is called. I can't agree with that. He said he enjoys the big matches. Well, this one's a big match. And uh, I'd say he's going to be under some pressure if he doesn't get line judges. But at the same time, it's the request of the players to bring in line judges. Players overruled. Gustavo, it's nice to see some good sportsmanship there. from Ugalde. He had the chance. Four serving one. Great hands from Rios to get that. That was hard. But he couldn't get that one. It's just sheer power from Jake Bradenbeck. Surf. Galde gets the opportunity. Oh, that was difficult. Right along the glass. He's unlucky there. Skip ball from Diaz. He knows he should have done better on that one. There's definitely a lot of power in this doubles matchup. Beautiful. The first pinch from Rios. Four serving two. Four serving two. Good jam surf. Nope. That one was down. I think Rios would want that one back. He really left it up. He had the opportunity to finish and just couldn't quite do it. He serves down the middle. Braden Beck calls for it. Good hands from Jake. Pushed it back to the front wall. Didn't over. Swing. So we're still just six points in. Skip ball. Diaz went through the legs unsuccessfully. Good get from Jake. Just sheer power from Jake Bredenbeck. 
Great shot, straight down the line. Here's the setup for Ugalde. What's he gonna do? He goes around the world. Oh, DS. He's not happy with himself. I couldn't see it, he says. It's always a difficult position to be that close to the front wall. Do you just drop it softly? Do you really go for power? Do you go for a pinch? Get from Ugalde. He gets up. He's back in the rally. Good shot from Jake. Down the line, says Sudzi. So, excuse me, down the middle. Two bounces. Get from Jose. Yeah. A lot of that match was point rather was played at the front. It's difficult to see. Lots of pinches. I suspect that Ecuador would want that one back. Good finish from Jose. Took that ball early. Didn't let it come to the back. No one was there up front. Four serving five. Skip ball from Jake. Kind of pulled up on it. Great get from Ugalde. That was just great defense from Ecuador. They earned that point through hustle and determination. Chasing a lot of balls there, but the outcome's in their favor. Just a reminder, if you haven't visited our Facebook page, International Racquetball Federation, with pictures up there on a regular basis. Also visit our website, internationalracquetball.com. We're going to be streaming live the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals in HD. We hope you'll join us for that. It'll be on our website, internationalracquetball.com. Uh, meanwhile, we hope you enjoy this um, ad hoc stream. It's been fun to watch a variety of different countries today competing against each other. With players representing North America, Central America, South America. Basketball, Europe and Asia. Representation in Asia from India, Korea, and Japan. In Europe we have representation from Ireland and England. And then a multitude of Central South American countries in addition to both the United States you're watching and Canada. The United States have won every world championships as a team. 
with the exception of one, which was won by Canada. I, sp I spoke to one of the Mexican delegates and kind of asked, is this, is this going to be your year? We hope so, was his response. But we thought 2014 was going to be our year, too. So, nice shot from Jake. So will the same thing happen? Will the U.S. find themselves at the top? Or is Mexico going to claim their first team world championship title? Beautiful trophy for the winners. You can see pictures of that if you look at the day one photos on Facebook, along with the medals that are going to be awarded to players who finish semi-finals or better. There's no third, fourth place. Players receive a joint third medal. Meanwhile, the action continues. Beautiful pinch from Jake Brendeck. Timeout, Ecuador. U.S. are up eight, serving seven. For those of you who've never been to the courts here at Cali, Colombia, we have two glass courts. One is a show court with glass on three sides, which is what you're watching right now. We also have another glass court, which has a back glass and side glass and then cement front and side and then we have six additional courts with glass in the back so this is a great facility for spectators to enjoy watching racquetball uh, at the same instance it's also a very hot and humid environment for the players we don't have air conditioning here our backs are to the outdoors and you can see that from the video screen and as a consequence, it gets pretty warm, especially during the middle of the afternoon. It's warm for fans, referees, players, particularly for players under the lights. Without any kind of fans, it gets quite warm in there. That's particularly important when players are playing from countries that are not particularly hot and humid. For those who are from that environment, it's nothing special it's it's pretty normal but for some countries take for example uh, Canada or Ireland for example they may not be exposed to these conditions very often and so it takes a little while to acclimatize and it could affect play so we're back in we're eight serving seven and Nick Lobb a big skip from meet you Roll out. Skip, said Sudzi Munchik. <laughs> Gustavo wants to replay it. The referee, Jose Diaz, says, Why? I couldn't see it, says Gustavo. There seems to be a lot of disagreement. I mean, the reality is, is that the referee is the referee. They make a decision, we move on. So, uh, he, what he said was, I didn't see it. Well. Uh, according to the rule books, if you didn't see it, then you didn't see the skip. So you have to assume that they made a good shot. So it looks like they're going to replay this. Interesting. So as he looks across and says, what was that about? Dave Ellis says, I don't know. Definitely an interesting call. Winner from Michu. Seven serving nine. There's a 
set up for Jake. Good shot from Jose Diaz. Straight down the line. Kill shot. Hello. Alejandro Herrera rocks across the screen. He's a happy man winning in a tie break against Canadians. Nine serving seven. Nine serving seven. Got a good crowd here now. One of the last matches of the day. Jake tries to go behind his back. Doesn't work. I don't think he's had one work yet, so. Again though, ball's coming so fast. There's not too much you can do. Crushed it into the corner. Gets another point. point. Ten, serving seven. Ten serving seven, five points away. Rios called Ugalde off that, even though it was on his side. In the end, that was a good decision. It was a nice pinch winner. Seven, serving ten. So, can Ecuador get it back? They're down. Seven, serving ten. Z surf. Good shot by Rios. Excuse me, Diaz. He's not happy with it, but he did enough. Two bounces before the back wall forced a poor return, which skipped. Lob down the middle. Good shot from Jake. Dave Ellis wants a Z serve by the looks of it. He's getting one. Galga hit it, hits it right back at Diaz. It's too close to Diaz to control and he dumps it into the floor. Beautiful shot. Wow, says one of the crowd. 11 serving seven. 11 serving seven. <laughs> Beautiful hands from Diaz. It's a good example of controlling the point. Instead of just wailing on it, as you could do. Just gentle, soft tap to the front. Can't return it. So this is the 18th IRF World Championships. We saw the New Mexican duo of Peola Lenguria and Samantha Salas win the women's doubles in 2014. Longoria also won the singles event. On the men's side, the winner was Rocky Carson over a perhaps surprise finalist in Conrado Moscoso from Bolivia. And in the doubles, we saw Colombia win their first ever World Championship gold medal, taking out Canada in two games. So it was an interesting matchup earlier today when Colombia took on Canada in the first doubles match of this week. They took out Canada in a tie break. Canada won the first game. Colombia took the second and tie break fairly comfortably, you might say. We've got time in, 12 serving seven. So Ecuador need a side out. They've got to get some points on the board. Right now, US have all the momentum. Jake's really powering his shots. Diaz a little bit more control, but combine the two are doing more than Ecuador can handle right now. So, what can Ecuador do? Good get from Ugalde. You get the sense though that, oh wow, 
huge skip from Diaz. Even a surgeon would struggle to take the splinters out of that one. You get the sense though, it, the Ecuador are pushing the ball back. They're really not dictating play. It's the U.S. who are dictating play. Ecuador are merely playing defensively and at some point they're going to have to win the points. The U.S. aren't really skipping it that much. If you look at the skip count right now, it's Ecuador who are struggling more. And unless that changes, we can't see a, any different result. It was a great pointing case. Pushing the ball back, just getting a return, getting a, a, a racket on it, is just giving the U.S. the opportunity to really attack the ball. Replay call. Skip ball. It was good hustle by Diaz, uh, even just to get out of the way of the ball. Uh, but that was a really smart shot from Mugabe. He knew Diaz was stuck on that side. Hit it to that side, forcing Diaz to uh, try something that perhaps could have been a little more painful than it turned out to be. Ball's wet. Okay, here we go. Seven serving 13, down by six. Good choice by Jake, right down the middle. No one was home. Excellent technique from Jake. Rolls it out in the front. Side out. Last match of the day. Got a good group here. Another error from Team Ecuador. 14 serving seven, US are starting to pull away. Game point. Drive Z coming up. Excuse me, not Drive Z. Great get from Diaz. Jake almost ran into the Ugalde. Half out. They question it, but Jake doesn't argue too much. 14-7. Great shot from Jake. They take the first game, 15-7, down early, and then steadily clawed their way back, even the score, and from then on, just continued to pound the ball at Ecuador. Ecuador responded by just pushing the ball back. Didn't really seem to have an answer to the power. As a consequence, the U.S. just consistently kept Ecuador on the defensive until they got the right opportunity to finish the point. Ecuador struggled to control the pace, particularly of Jake Bradenbeck. A lot more skips, a lot more simple mistakes in the back chasing the ball and it's not surprising therefore that the U.S. take first the first game. We're going to be back shortly with game two after a brief time break. Timeout. <laughs> 